This morning, I just want to start with a story. And um, it's actually, it's a story that Steve Harvey tells about a friend that he had that was dating a married man. And for two years, she dated this married man. And for two years, every week, this woman would meet this man in the same restaurant, and she waited for him to come. So Steve Harvey then said to her, he said to her, how do you think God is going to bless that? He asked her a question. How do you think God is going to, to bless that? And he said to her, how will God send you Mr. Wright if you are busy with the wrong man? And um, the woman said to him, do you really think that this guy is Mr. Wrong for me? And then he started telling her a story. He said to her, one day he wanted to buy a new car. And he started working for this new car and he started saving up. And every week from his salary, he would take a portion of his salary and he would save it. And he would get home, and he would, he would get home from work after payday and he would say to his mom, Mama, I'm going to buy me a new car. And every week she would say to him, I know that baby, but your old car is still on the blocks. And he just ignored her and he went on with his business and he kept on saying to her, every time he got paid, he said to her, Mama, I'm going to buy me a new car. And every week she would say the same thing. She would say, I know baby, but your old car is still on the blocks. And till one day he couldn't take it anymore. And he then said to her that, um, Mama, every week you tell me that I say to you, I'm going to buy me a new car and I'm into this positive speaking thing. You know, I know that I need to speak positive and I'm trying to speak positive here. Yeah. But every week you tell me when I'm telling you that I'm going to buy a new car, you tell me my old car is still, is still on the block. So I know you're trying to teach me something. And she said to him, yes, I'm trying to teach you something. She said, they, your old car is now standing outside there. It's on the blocks. It's full of weeds all around it. It's full of papers. It's dirty and it's rusted. So let me ask you a question. Where are you going to put your new car when you get it? Are you prepared for your new car? And he said, the moment she said that, he realized he needed to do something. So he went outside. He started cleaning, cleaning up all around the car, got the car cleaned up. He found one of his friends. They came and he took, they took away the car. He cleaned up all around it, cleaned up all the weeds and everything was, was taken away. And he said, all of a sudden, there was a clean space. And there was so much space in the backyard that he didn't, couldn't even realize it. So two weeks later, he saved up enough money and he bought his new car. And he brought his new car home and he gets home and he tells his mama, he says, his mom, he says, Mama, I bought my new car. And she said, Yes, because now you have somewhere to put it. And she said, Son, you cannot ask God for something which you are not ready to receive. Why would he give it to you? Okay, if you are not ready to receive it. So immediately when he told that to the lady, his friend, she was also, she started to cry because she realized what he was trying to say to her. He said to her, how can God give you the right man if you are busy with the wrong man and you're not ready to receive him? He says, if God would give you that new man, you would actually destroy his life and your life because you are not ready to receive it. You are going to mess it up. So guess what this lady did? She stopped going to the restaurant. She stopped meeting with this guy. And a few weeks later, down the line, she met the maitre d' of the restaurant. He saw her in the street and he ran up to her and he said to her, um, hi, I've been, I haven't seen you at the restaurant for a while. And then she said, yes, I'm not seeing my friend anymore. And he says, that's good news. And she said, what? He said, for two years, I've been watching you come to this restaurant, the most beautiful woman that I've ever seen. And I've always wanted to, to ask you out, but every, for two years, you've been with this guy for two years, and you've been sitting there with him, and for the life of me, I could not figure out why you are with this man. And 
I've been wanting to ask you out, but I couldn't. So what happened is, <coughs> excuse me. So what happened is that they started dating. One and a half years later, they got married. And that's not where the story ends. These two people then had two kids. And he's not the maitre d' of the restaurant anymore. He now owns the restaurant. And the girl, the reason that was because the girl was actually a financial advisor. So she was the missing piece for him. She was the missing piece in his life. <coughs> so instead of being a maitre d', he bought the restaurant. And not only did he buy the restaurant, they now have three restaurants. And they make more than $2 million a year. Okay, so why? The reason that happened was because they started taking the old car from the blocks. They started taking the old away so that they could make place for the new. The old car is a symbol, and I want to ask you this morning, what old car do you still have on the blocks? Maybe there's no place for the new thing in your life because you haven't gotten rid of the old thing yet. Could it be that God is actually waiting for you to get rid of the old thing so that he can make place for the new thing? Could it be the case for your dream, for your breakthrough, for your job, whatever you are trusting God for, are you ready to receive it? Remember what I said this morning, God can't give you something if you're not ready to receive it because it will destroy you. But that is what I want to say to you this morning. Are you ready to get your life in order? Are you ready to get your life in order? Listen to this statement. And I believe this is a very powerful statement. Order brings overflow. Let me repeat that. Order brings overflow. And that's also the title of my message this morning that I want to share with you. Be ready to receive. Order brings overflow. Be ready to receive. Order brings overflow. When we are ready to receive, God will bring the overflow. So, I want us to read 1 Corinthians 14.33. And listen to the scripture. It says this. It says, For God is not a God of disorder, but of peace. God is not a God of disorder, but God is a God of peace. Now, I want you to think about that. The opposite of of order is chaos. The opposite of order is confusion. The opposite of order is disorder. And the thing about that is that God does not bless chaos. God does not bless confusion because he's not the author of it. God cannot bless something that is not the author of. So God does not bless that. So what do we need to do? We need to get ready. So I don't know if you realize this, but we only have three weeks left in 2022. Can you believe it? Three weeks, then the year is gone. So how did this year go by so fast? Can you imagine that? We, sounds like, it feels like yesterday we were still celebrating 2022 starting. But I believe that with the year on its end, you know, a lot of times people wait for the new year. You know, to get things ready in their lives. They, they say, you know, New Year's, you all know New Year's resolutions. How many of you had New Year's resolutions last year? How many of you kept those New Year's resolutions? Okay, so I don't believe we should make New Year's resolutions. We should make commitments. You see, because if you make a commitment, then that thing will change. But if you make a resolution, you know, resolutions are probably made to be broken. But... With the end of this year, year, I believe we can get ready for the next year. Why wait for the new year to start getting things ready? And when we are ready, we can make the most of 2023, isn't it? So when we get things in order, we can get ourselves ready for the next year. So I heard Terry Savelle Foy actually say this, and this is the title of the message that I used. It's Dr. Jerry Savelle's daughter. She said, while she was praying and spending time with the Lord, she heard this phrase over and over in her heart. Order brings overflow. 
Order brings overflow. And I believe that that's a word that God has for us in preparation for the year to come. Okay? Order brings overflow. So God wants to get things in order in our life so that He can bring overflow into our lives. 1 Corinthians 14.33 actually says, once again, for God is not a God of disorder, but a God of peace. So I want you today, what I want to do is, is that I'm going to give you a very practical checklist of things that I believe we need to get in order to be ready for 2023. So um, let me just tell you this. When I speak of this, I'm not saying it to you alone. I'm speaking it to myself as well. Okay, so um, God always speaks to you first and then you speak to other people. Okay, so this is not me pointing the finger at you telling you need to get this right. This is God speaking to us and saying to us, get things in order. So I believe we are going to get rid of some cars on the blocks. Amen. We're going to get rid of some of that stuff that has been in our lives for so long that has been hindering us and stopping us from having everything that God has for us. So I want you to say with me, say, say with me, say, get ready. Order brings overflow. Okay, so are you ready to hear what God wants us to get in order? So the first thing that I believe we should get in order is to get our relationship with God in order. Okay, now I know that we always say that, but I think we always should say that because spending time with God and, and having a relationship with God, nothing in your life will change if you don't have a relationship with God. A relationship with God is the foundation for everything. Okay, if you don't have that foundation, then you have nothing to build on. So Hebrews 11 verse 6 says, God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Everybody say diligently. You see, God rewards those who diligently seek Him. Diligently. Diligently means consistently. Diligently, diligently means when things are good. Diligently means when things are bad. Diligently means when you feel like it. Diligently means when you don't feel like it. Okay, that's what diligently means. So God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. And once again, this should be the top priority in our lives. Matthew 6, 33, I think we all know this scripture by heart. Okay, um, seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So how many of you want things to be added to you? Okay, we all want things to be added to us. But the Bible says, seek First, you see, when this priority is in order, then the rest of the stuff starts to fall in place. But if this is out of order, then nothing can fall into place. Okay, you cannot do second first before you do first. Okay, so your relationship with God is your priority. So to have a relationship with God, listen to this, is not difficult. It's not difficult. I think religion has made to have a relationship with God difficult. To have a relationship with God is really not difficult. It's the thing that we should do, firstly, is, is to make it intentional. You know, are you intentional about your relationship with God? You know, it's, it's one of those things that we all know we should do, but sometimes we, because it's one of the easiest things to do, it's also one of the easiest things to neglect. So, and the devil wants you to neglect it because he knows what it will produce in your life. So be intentional about your relationship with God. So I want to just tell you this. There's three things that you should do. Set a time, find a place, and follow a plan. Set a time, find a place, and follow a plan. When it comes to your relationship with God, it's really as simple as that. Set a time each day that you are going to spend with God. Okay? It's like an appointment. Okay, if you, if you could have an appointment with the most important person in the world, okay, whoever you might think that might be, wouldn't it be more beneficial to you to even have an appointment every single day with the King of Kings and with the Lords of Lords? I think if there's one person you need to meet with on a daily basis, it's God. Okay, so don't misunderstand me when I'm saying this. I don't mean that you just talk to God in your quiet time and the rest of the day you ignore Him. 
Okay, you should still throughout the day talk to God. Okay, he's always with you, he never leaves you, he never forsakes you. But when you spend quality time with him, he can invest in you and you can hear from him. Okay, and he can change you. So you should be intentional about setting a time and say, listen, I'm going to use this time. This is my appointment with God every single day. So set a time. That's the first thing that you should do. And then you should always also find a place. Now, the thing is, is that the Bible talks a lot about a prayer closet. Okay, go into your prayer closet and pray. So find a place where you can be alone with God. And it doesn't always have to just be in a room. It can be in a car. It can be when you walk around the block. You know, just so many people that I know just walk around the block and they have conversations with God. Okay, people might not think you are, you are sane, but it doesn't matter what people think, does it? Okay, so you're getting two benefits in one. You're exercising and you're talking to God. Okay, so you can have that relationship with God any place, but find a place where you can say, this is my time with God, this is the place that I'm going to spend time with God. And then you should also have a plan. Okay, do you have a plan to follow? You all know that saying that says, failing to plan is planning to fail. If you don't have a plan, then you don't know what you are going to do, and then you just hope for the best. Okay, but if you have a plan, you can really have a quality time and a quality place where you can, can meet with God. So to have a plan, I always say that to read the Bible, just find something like a Bible reading plan. Okay, you get a lot of them on the internet. You can just go and you can search Bible reading plan. They will give you plans. You can even download that app, um, the Bible app, and you can actually, they have plans on there where you can read through the Bible um, the year. So by doing that, I've read through the Bible two times this year already. Okay, by just following that app. But if I didn't have a plan, I wouldn't have read through the Bible. So I'm not saying that to brag. I'm saying that to encourage you to have a plan because then you can read through the Bible. Okay, so have a plan. You can also have um, worship music. Okay, spend time in God's presence. When you worship God, when His presence is there, God can do for you in a moment in His presence more than anyone, what anyone's words can do for you in a lifetime. If you just make some time to spend time in God's presence through worshiping Him. Okay, it's amazing what God's presence can do in your life. It can make you whole. He can heal sicknesses and diseases in your body. He can, he can teach you. He can show you how to relate to your, to your children. He can show you how to relate to your employer. He can give you wisdom. There's so many things that we can just receive from God's presence. And then very important also that I think you should take with you is a journal. Okay, write down what God says to you. Listen, if someone very important gives you a message, I think you want to remember that message, wouldn't you? So if you have a journal, then you can write down what God says to you and you can actually treat what He says to you as important. So write down what God says to you because it is divine instruction that can change your life. Okay, so it's important to spend time in God's presence. It's important to pray. It's important to do these things to get your relationship with God in order for the year to come. Because if you're going to do that, you are setting yourself up for what God has for you. Listen to this. When we start getting our relationship with God in order, our lives will begin to overflow with purpose. When you start to get your relationship with God in order, your life will begin to overflow with purpose. He's the one that created you. He created you on purpose for a purpose. And He's the only one that's going to reveal that purpose to you. So that's the first thing that you need to get in order, is to get your relationship with God in order. Now I'm going to get very practical. The second thing that you need to get in order is to get yourself in order. Get yourself in order. You see, all change, we always think that change is going to come from somewhere out there. But the biggest change is going to start with you. The biggest change I want to make in my life is going to start with me. Okay, if I'm going to get myself in order, then the rest of, of things is going to get in order. So, you know, it's like charging our phones. How many of you have seen? We constantly charge our phones. If it says 5% battery, what do we do? We run around, you know, I need to charge my phone. Where's the charger? Where's the charger? 
but we don't take the time to recharge our own personal batteries. Instead, we do a lot of things that actually drain our batteries. Okay, so it's important that you do some things for you. Because if you're not going to do that, you're going to run out of energy, you're going to run out of power, and you're going, to, you're going to drain yourself. So the first thing that you need to do to get yourself in order, and this is not going to sound very spiritual, but it's very, very good, get a health checkup. Get a health checkup. You know, how many things can we avoid by just getting a health checkup? Many people think there's no reason to do that. You know, I feel healthy. There's no reason for me to, to get a health checkup. But I've heard many stories. An example of that is Angelina Jolie. She actually found out by doing a health checkup, she avoided breast cancer. Okay, so we can avoid things if we just do checkups, if we just get regular checkups. So someone suggested do it once a year, even just before your birthday. Schedule it uh, just before your birthday. Get a health checkup and you can actually prevent a lot of things. You can prevent, you can avoid surgery. You can avoid treatments, you can avoid expenses just by getting checked once a year. So, listen to this, what gets scheduled gets done. If you don't put something on your schedule, if you don't decide you're going to do this, it's not going to get done. So you have to make time to do this. That's the first thing that you need to do to get yourself in order. The second thing that you need to get yourself in order is to get some rest. Get some rest. You know, research actually shows that we need seven to nine hours of sleep every night. Research shows that. And I don't know if you know this, but a lack of sleep actually, it affects your metabolism. It makes you gain weight if you don't get enough sleep. It affects your blood pressure. It affects your emotions. It affects your mood. Okay, you know, tired people are cranky people. Okay? Don't say amen if the person is next to you. Okay? It affects your energy. It affects your motivation to go after your dreams. If you don't get enough rest, all of those things are affected. And you might, so listen to this, you might feel unmotivated, you might feel depressed just because you're going to bed too late and you're not getting enough rest. So, what I want to encourage you to do to get yourself in order is to decide on a time when you are going to go to bed and then just carry through on that. And every night just aim to stick to it. Stick to it. Go to bed at a certain time of night and I guarantee you, um, you will start getting, you will start feeling better and all of those things. The third, third thing that you need to do to get yourself in order is to exercise. Okay, now I know that... Uh, we all think when we hear exercise, we just hear, we just hear gym. Okay, but that's not the only top form of exercise there is. You see, if you are complaining about having no energy, exercise is actually the very thing that gives you energy. It's the very thing that gives you energy. It's, it's the thing that is going to, to, to help you to have more energy to do the things that you want to do. So... Something, so when you do this, do something that you can maintain. Like I said, you don't necessarily have to join a gym. Just start walking around the block. Or, you know, just go for a walk in the park. Or just take your dogs for a walk. Or whatever you do, just get some exercise. Start somewhere. And you can start with 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. And you'll see, the more you do it, the more you will want to do it. Because it's going to make you feel better and it's going to give you more energy. The next thing that you need to do is, is that look at your routine. Your routine. Okay, your routine. If I want to encourage you this morning to protect your mornings. Protect your mornings. You see, the mornings is actually the only time that you have to yourself. Have you noticed that? When you wake up early, say for instance you wake up at 5 o'clock in the morning, that is actually the only time that you have for yourself. See, the rest of the day, what happens? Everyone is phoning you. There's emails to be sent. There's works to be done. The kids want your attention. The boss wants this, this. Your husband wants this. Your wife wants this. So your attention is all over the place. But that morning routine, when you take that time in the morning and you dedicate it to yourself and you protect that time for yourself, you actually can invest a lot in yourself. 
Okay, so I've talked about that, the five morning habits of successful people. Okay, what they actually do is that they say they beat, it's mind over mattress. Okay, so they fight, they, they beat the battle for the bed. You know, so in the morning you can wake up five o'clock and you have time to invest in yourself or you can just keep on sleeping and you lose that. But if you protect that, though, that time that you invest in yourself, it can actually change your life. Think about this. The five morning habits of successful people are, they pray. Okay, they spend time with God. Okay, the second thing that they do is that they read books. The third thing that they do is they set goals for themselves. Okay, they set goals for themselves. They have specific goals that they want to achieve. The fourth thing that they do is they listen to audio messages. Okay, teachings, stuff that teaches them, that, that grows them. And the last thing that they do is exercise. Now think about this. If you do that every morning, okay, every single morning of your life, if you do that two hours a day, by the end of the year, how much time with God have you invested in yourself? How much books can you have read? Okay, how many books would you have read? How many teachings would you have listened Okay, that can all these things improve your life. How many minutes of exercise would you have had? How many of your goals can you achieve? You see, by just investing and protecting your morning routine, it will help you so much. Now these things, you should actually make these things non-negotiable. Don't let anyone steal that time that you invest in yourself. Because if you do that, then you know, it will keep you motivated. People sometimes say, but how can you stay motivated to do that? Well, let me tell you, people aren't motivated to do that. But if you have a set routine, if you have a set time every day, that routine becomes your motivation. See, you don't have to, and this is also what successful people say. They say, six, um, they, they rely on their established routine for their motivational level. When you have an established routine, it motivates you. You don't have to get motivated. You don't have to feel like doing something. Your routine motivates you to do that. And I want to share this with you. It says, your, repeta your, your repetition, sorry, let me re rephrase that. Your repetition is your reputation. Your repetition is your reputation. What you keep on repeating is what you become. What you keep on repeating is what you become. So you all know that thing that says, be careful of your thoughts. Your thoughts become your words. Your words become your actions. Your actions become your habits. Your habits become your character and your character determines your destiny. You see, it's those things that you keep on repeating is what you become. So if you have an established routine, it will help you to become what you want to become instead of just allowing everything to determine what you are. Okay, so protect your routine. The next one that you need to do to get yourself in order is to invest in your personal growth. Invest in your personal growth. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't want to, at the end of next year, just want to be the same that I am this year. How many times do we go through the years and through the motions and every year we fight the same battles? Every year we struggle with the same things. Every year we keep on repeating the same patterns over and over. Now, once again, you all know that saying from Albert Einstein, if we keep on doing the same thing and we expect different results, it is called insanity. To think that things are going to change if you don't make a change, nothing will change if nothing changes. If we're not going to change things, things aren't going to change. So we need to make a change if we want to see a change. So invest in your personal growth. Invest in your relationships with people. Invest in your relationship with God. Invest in your ministry. Invest in the things that you want to improve in your life. Invest in them. Grow in them. Because if you just start doing that, imagine what your life will look like in one year. Just in one year, what will your life look like? Okay, so all of those things are things that you need to do to get yourself in order. Okay, things to get yourself in order. The third thing that you need to get in order is to get your surroundings 
in order. Get your surroundings in order. Now, I don't know if you realize this, but the mess causes stress. Have you experienced that? How many times do you walk past the same room in the house and you think to yourself, I need to clean this room. I need to tidy up my backyard. I need to do this. I need to get this sorted out. And every time you walk past it, something in your brain triggers and it says to you, you need to do this. You need to do this. You need to do this. And you've all know what happens when something nags you. It puts stress on you. So the mess causes stress. So when you start getting your surroundings in order, you will start experiencing peace. So your outer world actually reflects your inner world. Did you know that? Your outer world reflects your inner world. What's going on on the inside determines how it looks on the outside. Okay, and what is going on on the outside will determine what you experience on the inside. Luke 16 verse 10, the Bible says, Whoever is faithful with very little will also be faithful with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. Okay, and to show you that, I just want to show you this clip by a Navy Admiral. And it's something so simple and so profound. Okay, he actually says, when the way that you do some things is the way that you do everything. To me, basic SEAL training was a lifetime of challenges crammed into six months. So here are the 10 lessons I learned from basic SEAL training that hopefully will be of value to you as you move forward in life. Every morning in SEAL training, my instructors, who at the time were all Vietnam veterans, would show up in my barracks room, and the first thing they'd do was inspect my bed. If you did it right, the corners would be square, the covers would be pulled tight, the pillow centered just under the headboard, and the extra blanket folded neatly at the foot of the rack. It was a simple task, mundane at best, but every morning we were required to make our bed to perfection. It seemed a little ridiculous at the time, particularly in light of the fact that we were aspiring to be real warriors, tough, battle-hardened seals. But the wisdom of this simple act has been proven to me many times over. If you make your bed every morning, you will have accomplished the first task of the day. It will give you a small sense of pride, and it will encourage you to do another task, and another, and another. And by the end of the day, that one task completed will have turned into many tasks completed. Making your bed will also reinforce the fact that the little things in life matter. If you can't do the little things right, you'll never be able to do the big things right. And if by chance you have a miserable day, you will come home to a bed that is made. <laughs> that you made. And a made bed gives you encouragement that tomorrow will be better. So if you want to change the world, start off by making your bed. If you want to change the world, start by making your bed. You see, so many times we complain about everything we don't have control over. But if we just start doing the things we have control over, then all of a sudden things start to fall into place. So listen to this. When we start getting our homes in order, our lives will begin to overflow with promotion. When we start getting our, our homes in order, our lives will begin to overflow with promotion. You see, God said, if you are faithful with the little, much more will be added unto you. So the, third, the fourth thing that we need to get in order is to get our finances in order. Now, Proverbs 21.20 says, The wise have wealth and luxury, but fools spend whatever they get. The wise have wealth and luxury, but fools spend whatever they get. Okay, so how do you get your finances in order? Well, I believe the first step to do that is to tithe. See, you cannot... You cannot get your finances in order if you don't tithe. Okay, when you give, and this is the thing about tithing, God is not trying to get something from you when you tithe. He's trying to get something to you. Okay, He's not trying to be hard on you. He's actually doing something that's hard on the devil. See, when God blesses you, the devil can't do anything about it. But in order to do that, we need to tithe. Tithing is a biblical principle. The second thing you need to do to get your finances in order is to budget. Okay, now you all heard those adverts, but you didn't budget. 
You see, if you don't budget, okay, you can end up in a lot of mess. Okay, John Maxwell says a budget is simply telling your money where to go instead of wondering where it went. Isn't that the truth? How many of you at the end of the month wonder where your money went? Okay, maybe you should budget. Okay, when you when you budget, you will you tell your money where to go, not your money to just see where it went. So no matter what your financial situation is in life, you need a budget. Okay, you need a budget. A budget is a financial roadmap that will help you to reach your financial goals. Okay, so you need to budget. And then the third thing that we need to do is we need to, to get our finances in order is we need to save. Okay, I know we live in very difficult economic hard times and, and stuff like that. And when we talk about saving, we think it's impossible. But when I'm talking about saving, we don't necessarily have to save a million rand. Okay, start where you are. Start taking something of what you earn and just save it. And when you do that consistently over a long period of time, you will have saved something. Okay, so they actually say that most people don't save anything. And I believe if we want to change our life, we need to start. If we want to change our finances, we need to start saving, saving something. So someone once said, what would happen if you don't get a paycheck? What would happen if you don't get a paycheck this coming month, which will not happen by the grace of God? But what would happen? You know, how many people have something saved so that they can protect themselves when they don't have an income? You see, when you save money and you have money put away, then you can protect your income for three months, six months, whatever the time may be until you get back up on your feet. The more you have saved, the more you can actually do that. So to get your finances in order, Save, budget, and save. And listen to this. When we start getting our finances in order, our lives will overflow with prosperity. When we start getting our finances in order, our lives will overflow with prosperity. Then the next thing, the fifth thing that you need to get in order is to get your goals in order. How many of you have goals? Okay. If you don't have goals, get goals. Okay, You need goals. Get your goals in order. Proverbs 29 verse 18 says, Where there is no vision, the people perish. You know what perish means? It means to die. It means to wither away. It means to come to nothingness. Where you don't have a vision, you perish. There's nothing. So, listen to this wisdom. When you aim at nothing, you will hit it every time. If you're not aiming at anything, you will hit it every time. So don't aim at nothing. Aim at something. When you have goals, you can actually aim at something. I don't know if you know this, but the very act of just sitting down and writing your goals actually makes your heart rate come up. Okay? It makes you, your, your, it makes you excited. Okay, by just sitting down and writing your goals, it makes you excited. It's because God created us, <coughs> excuse me, to have a vision, to have a goal, to work for something. You see, you feel good about your life when you are actively working towards something that is important to you. Okay, how many of you at the end of the day, after the day has finished, you sit and you feel that you haven't accomplished anything for that day? How do you feel? miserable. You feel depressed because you felt this was a worthless day. But if you have a goal and you achieve that goal, how many of you feel excited? You feel this day was a productive day. I actually did something that I wanted to do. And that's the importance of goals. When you have these goals, it helps you to feel that sense of accomplishment, that sense of achievement that I actually did something and I did something on purpose. And that's why you should have the goal. So I want to just give you a few mistakes that people make when it comes to goal setting. Okay, the first one is people set too many goals. So often people have too many goals. Listen, you can't do everything. You can't do everything. So research actually says that to have 7 to 10 goals is, is enough. Okay, 7 to 10 goals. So if you have 7 to 10 goals that you want to achieve, it's actually enough that you can work on. Okay, so I want you to just, if you don't have any goals, you know, the best thing to do is to see yourself at the end of 2023. Okay, 
Maybe you should do this. Just close your eyes for a moment. Don't fall asleep. Okay? But think to yourself, you're at the end of 2023. It has been the best year that you've ever had. You know, all your dreams for that year came true. Everything that you trusted God for came true. What are the things that come to your mind when you think about that year being the best year? You can open your eyes. Okay? What are the things that you think about when you think this was the best year that I ever had? This is what I accomplished. And that is where your goal should start. Start with making a list of the things that you want to have done by the end of this year. Okay? Make that list. And when you make that list, it will motivate you. It will inspire you. Okay? But 7 to 10 goals. Then very important, don't just think about that goals. How many of you have a list of goals written down? You see, when you have a list of goals written down, they actually say this, your probability of achieving your goals increases by 42% by just having your goals written down. You see, the problem is out of mind. I'm sorry, out of sight, out of mind. You see, if you don't have it in front of you, if you can't see your goals, you know, tomorrow you've forgotten what you wanted to achieve, what you wanted to do. So 42% more likelihood by just writing your goals down. So I would encourage you, go and write down those 7 to 10 goals for you and keep it in front of you every single day. Then, very important, make those goals specific. Now, how many people have goals that say, I want to lose weight, I want to read more, I want to read my Bible more, I want to earn so much, in I want to earn more income, I want to um, do something, okay? But it's all very vague. Listen to this, vague goals produce vague results. If you don't know exactly what you want to do, you will never do it. So if you have a goal, be specific, write it down. So a specific goal is called a SMART goal. Okay, SMART people make SMART goals. A SMART goal is a goal that is specific. It's measurable. It's achievable. It's realistic. And it's time bound. Okay, so those are the goals that we need to set. So a specific goal would be, for instance, a SMART goal would be to lose weight, would then be to say, I want to lose five kilograms by the 1st of March 2022. Doesn't that sound much more specific? Okay, now you can measure it. Now you know exactly what do I need to do from now till the 1st of March to lose five kilograms. Okay, now you can start making a plan. Okay, now you can say, listen, I need to, what do I need to do this? I need to exercise so much. I need, need to stop eating chocolate cake. Okay, or I need to stop um, whatever. Okay, but the point is that's a specific goal. Okay, and specific goals have specific results. Okay, then the fourth thing that you need to do is you need to assign a deadline. Okay, that's why I said your goal needs to be, if you say I want to lose weight by the 1st of March. I don't know if you've noticed this, but deadlines motivate you. It motivates you to do something. So, for instance, you know, how many of you get, when just before you go on holiday uh, and you go away from work, that's the time most people get the most work done. Because they realize that this is the deadline. I need to finish the work by then. So when you have a deadline, it inspires you to do something and to do something quickly. Okay? So deadlines are motivating. So have a deadline of when you want to achieve your goal. And then very important, make your goal visible. Put it somewhere where you can see it. Okay? The Bible says that we are transformed into the same image by beholding. The more you see, the more you are transformed. You become what you think about. I don't know if you've noticed this, but all of us are mental people. We think in pictures. Okay? We don't think in, in words. We think in pictures. Okay? So when someone says yellow banana, a picture of a yellow banana pops up in your head. Okay? So when you have a picture okay, of what you want to achieve, you can see it and it will help you to achieve that. Okay? So get... And make your goals visible. We start getting our goals in order, our lives will overflow with fulfillment. So, in closing, when we start getting our relationship with God in order, 
our lives will begin to overflow with purpose. When we start getting our homes in order, our lives will begin to overflow with promotion. When we start getting ourselves in order, our lives will begin to overflow with opportunities. When we start getting our finances in order, our lives will begin to overflow with prosperity. When we start getting our goals in order, our lives will begin to overflow with fulfillment. Because order brings overflow. And I want to close with this. Make a decision this year, before the end of this year, to do it. To not say, I will try it, okay, because then you haven't made a commitment. Then you've only made a resolution. Don't say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try it. Say, I'm going to do it. Make a decision. And then take some action on that decision. And listen to what T.D. Jake said. He said, your decisions is your pathway to your destiny. Your decisions is your pathway to your destiny. When we make to the decision to get our lives in order, that order will bring overflow. So I want to ask you this morning in closing, are you ready to make a decision? Are you ready to decide to get your life in order? Let's pray. Father God, we want to come this morning and Father, I know that this is what you wanted me to share this morning, that order brings overflow. And Lord, that it is time for us to get our lives in order. Lord, I know that we don't want our lives to be the same day to day, year after year, the same routines, the same problems, the same challenges, Lord. But Lord, when we make this decision, this commitment, Lord God, to stand up and to say, this year, I will change my life. Regardless of the obstacles, regardless of the things that come my way, I will make a decision to change my life. And when we make that decision, Father, thank you that the moment we make that decision, you work with us. You empower us. You strengthen us. You give us the wisdom. You give us the opportunities. And you show us, Lord God, what we need to do in order to reach the destination that you have for us, Father. And Father, I declare over this congregation today, as we bring things in order in our lives, Lord, that you will bring the overflow. You will bring the overflow. I speak the overflow over every single person that is in this place this morning, that is hearing this message this morning morning, Lord. I thank you that order brings overflow and you bring order into their lives. You bring overflow into their lives, Lord, and you help them like you did in the book of Genesis to bring things in order, Father. And we thank you, Lord, that you help us to do this, not by might, not by power, but by the Spirit of God who strengthens us, empowers us, and helps us to do and to be everything that we can be and everything that we can have, all for your glory in Jesus' name. Name, amen and amen.